Hey everyone, my name is Elliot. Today I'll be going over a demo on how we can modify the data within a table by clicking on a button that pops open a modal and then altering the data. To help explain a little bit better what that exactly means, I'm going to go ahead and run the service. So here you see we have a table with various records in it. And then to the right of the table we have three different buttons. If we click the view and edit button, it pops open a modal and then within this modal we can adjust the line data here so uh, let's say we want to change the zip code to something like this and then we could close you can see now that the zip code data has changed from what it was to this and then if we pop open this one now we can change this data if we want and so on and so forth for the rest of them. In addition to this demo, we also have other resources available to help you. We have our Spark control page where it has a list of all the controls available at Spark, articles to describe how to use them, and then JS documentation that describes all the configuration options and methods available with each control, as well as an article specifically about this topic, which is called Achieve Better Performance Within a Table through decoupling and lazy loading. You can read this article and it can go through even more in depth about exactly how we can create something like this. And you can find this by just going to our search option here and then typing this in and it'll pop up. So if I go ahead and continue on to the coach view, we can show how this is made. Within here, the coach view table content modified within modal, we have a nested coach view down here and I'll later discuss how we create this. So on the outside we have a vertical layout, a table, and then nested within this table we have five separate output texts here, and then a vertical section with a button, and then the nested coach view within here. If I dive into this nested coach view that we created, we have a deferred section on the outside with a modal section within that, a well, and then within this vertical layout we have five different output texts, input group, and text controls. And then finally at the bottom we have the close button here. The reason why we nest these controls within this coach view, not the parent coach view, is so that we can decouple the two, meaning that this view does not need to be aware of what record is created this coach view. Rather, rather the functions used within this coach view are only concerned with this specific view. Within the variables tab, we have an address object defined that has these parameters. And then within the layout, we bind the address properties to the text controls. So we have address line 1 here, address line 2, city, state, and so on. On the parent coach view, for the variables, we also have the address as a list. Then we bind that address list to the table here, and we bind each one of the address current item, and this is address line 1, address line 2, city, state, etc., until we get to the last column, where we pass in just the current item of the address into the modal, and then it'll take that specific address and then pass them into each one of the text controls here. To populate our table, Within our human service, we have an initialization script defined here where we pass in various address information and define each of the address objects in the list. Remember, within the coach that has the coach view, to bind the address list to the coach. Within this coach view, under the buttons on click event, we have this syntax written me.ui.getSibling, then we pass in the coach views control ID and then call the show modal function, which is defined within the nested modal one coach view. Within our article that was shown earlier, the Achieve Better Performance, it describes a little bit more in detail about how the me.ui.getSibling function is used. A brief explanation is that it takes the current view and looks at the table's records and gets other views that are defined within the same index. In this specific case, when I click the button, 
it is looking for the nested modal one coach view within the specific row of this button and then call that created coach view show modal function something to be aware of is that because we're nesting a coach view within each record of a table if this table has hundreds of records this is a lot of coach views for the page to render at one time and can have serious performance implications to get around this we make use of our deferred section control which is within the nested coach view if we dive into that coach view here you can see the deferred section we have on the outside if you need more information about the deferred section please visit our support site at support.salingprocess.com forward slash spark dash ui dash controls and look at the deferred sections article or JS documentation to specifically see details about how this control works. So within the nested modal under the behavior option and then we have the inline JavaScript here you can see we have the show modal function that we called on the button click defined Remember how I said that this coach view is concerned with its view and not the parent object above it? We can use the word this.showModal to define the function. And here you can see this equals the view class. And then you'll see this syntax here where we go this.ui.get deferred section 1, which is the deferred section's control ID. We see if that has loaded by calling the isLoaded method of the deferred section, which returns true or false. So if this is the first time that we've entered into the coach view, then we skip over this and we load the deferred section by calling its lazy load method. If it is not the first time and the coach view has already been loaded through the deferred section, then we go ahead and just show the modal instead by calling the modal here with its control ID. If I go ahead and look at the layout within the deferred section, and on its lazy loaded event, you can see we have the syntax me.ui.getSibling modal section one dot show. So what we're saying here is that the first time you visit this coach view, we're going to load this deferred section, and when it's finished loading, go ahead and pop open the modal. Otherwise, if it has already been loaded, we'll just go ahead and pop open the modal in the true part of the if statement we find in our function. At the very bottom, and within the on click of the close button here, we just simply tell the modal to hide or to close when clicked. Uh, notice that in both of these inline JavaScript events, we had to say me.ui.getSibling. And the reason why we have to do this is because we need to re still reference this specific row's view. This concludes our demo. Again, please check out our articles if you need more explanation on how to create this type of interface. Thanks so much for watching, and have a good day.